The new converter showed up earlier this week. Time's a wasting. Let's get on with it. So it seems like things are starting to get backed up left and right no matter what I do, and the next few videos will make that clear, but we did send the old converter in that had some issues. As you remember, Ray pointed out on the dyno that the converter is definitely slipping. It's getting pushed through. We're never getting a full lockup on that torque converter basically a one-to-one -one. where is the speed again we're hitting about 133 mile an hour all motor at the same rpm we're basically hitting about 145 and when we took it to the track it wasn't getting up on the trans brake properly so something was definitely up with it it was time for a new converter <laughs> The old converter was about 10 years old. It really didn't know me anything. It was actually really well built. So when my buddy Nelson, who happens to own ACC Performance, which actually stood for, at one point in time, Alabama Converter Company. How's that for a piece of trivia? This company's been around since 1970, and Nelson has owned the company for 17 years. So Boss Hog Converters is the brand. The company is ACC Performance Products. My old converter, which I sent into Nelson, was cut open. They looked into it to see what was up with it. And actually, his report was it's really well built. Uh, and it was, you know, it was made with good stuff. And that was actually made by BTE. Uh, specifically, Neil Knight is the converter guy over at BTE. And he did a fantastic job. Like I said, the converter owes me nothing. It's got hundreds of trans brake launches with very little gear multiplication. So it took a lot of load. And after 10 years of pretty heavy racing, you know, horsepower pushing a thousand, actually, for a large chunk of that. Pretty good lifespan. So, you know, Nelson had nothing bad to say about it, said it was all good parts. In fact, it was hard to tell exactly what the problem was. Nelson actually speculates that it was the bigger throttle body that was preventing me from getting up on the trans brake, which is possible, even though I did look at the dyno graphs and saw that it actually made more low end torque with the bigger throttle body, but who knows what's going on on the trans brake at the track. So without further ado, let's dig in. I hate these staples. You just gotta be kind of butch about them. Now we'll have to find that part. BTE. <laughs> now right away, what strikes me is this converter is physically smaller than the BTE converter. Uh, in fact, uh, Nelson told me that this should be approx I asked, approximately how much lighter is it? He said approximately 7.8 pounds exactly. So he knows his stuff. That doesn't make it light though. It's still a heavy beast. Well, let's take a look at it. It's pretty, it's certainly very nice. There are some differences, some notable differences. The first thing that strikes me between this and the BTE converter, one of the reasons why it's lighter, is the BTE converter has a huge anti-ballooning plate right along the front. Now, the way ACC makes their converters that's a little bit different is this is all a weld. In fact, if we take a slightly closer look, you can't even really make out the chevrons, but Nelson told me to actually take a close look at it, and he sent me a photo where you can actually see it. So this takes the place of that plate, and now if I misspeak, I'm going on what I learned, so this is kind of all new to me, but I'm gonna to try to be as accurate as possible. 
So what they do is they actually, when they weld this, they also quench it and that increases the hardness, which prevents it from ballooning. He has no worries about this converter being able to handle the stresses of the trans brake launch of the car, especially even with the 308 gears, which is my primary concern. Now on the back side, like I said, this thing ain't light. It looks pretty much like your typical power glide converter, actually. And the way this works, let me go run and get uh, the adapter also known as the crank pilot. In case you've ever wondered how to adapt a GM transmission to a Ford engine, this is how you do it. So the flex plate gets bolted here. You generally use washers as spacers to get the right amount of play. And then you use a crank adapter pilot, which is something along these lines. And this fits right over here. And actually, you know, I'll, I'll clean it up, but that's actually a really good fit right out of the box, as a matter of fact. And then this part of the pilot goes in the back of the crank. And that's really it. The sole purpose of this is to make sure the converter and the input shaft is all concentric to the crankshaft in the engine. That's really all it is. It's not really rocket science. So they also weld the turbine hub and that increases the overall strength and gives the converter less slippage. The turbine is now able to handle like 14,000 RPM instead of the regular about 8,000-ish RPM. So that's an awesome benefit too. And when you're looking at the welding station, there's like a 1,200 pound roll of solid core welding wire there. And he's got like four of these stations. And they also use a custom formulated gas and the machines are even set up to the weather. Humidity and barometric pressure play a role in the setup. And like, I never even heard of, you know, going to such extremes to make sure everything is great. In fact, Miller, you know, the blue company, not Lincoln, the red company, but Miller uh, trusts them as one of seven companies to R&D robotic welding for them. So they do good stuff, again, as does BTE. BTE is more of a high-end racing company, whereas ACC also does high-end racing, but they also provide private label converters for a whole bunch of companies. They even provide converters to several multi-billion dollar companies. So again, as far as the features and the differences, this converter, I can tell right now, is physically smaller in diameter. Like I said earlier, it's 7.8 pounds lighter. Uh, we'll find out if, if uh, she slips or not. Let's see if I can get this plastic cap off on video. Yep, there it is. And there's a look right in the side. Look in the hole. You know, everything looks good. We just got to pop this, this puppy on there. And I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed. I got stuff everywhere. It's time we got this thing together so we can hit the dyno and then the track. And one of the things that's been a significant holdup in my ability to produce videos is something that's going to, in the future, improve my ability to produce videos. In fact, I'm gonna be doing this kinda of most of the time, and you're gonna see why in the upcoming videos. So definitely stay tuned, of course, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, all that happy jazz. But you know, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this, as always, you know. What could possibly go wrong, right? Penetrate much? Ooh, that's hot.